Hey guys, Professor Bill of Comic Book University and West Coast Avengers issue number two with a giant sized Tigra. That's right. So let's get into who actually made this comic book. And then we'll get into what happened in the comic book. So we got writer Kelly Thompson, artist Stefano Caselli, color artist Triana, excuse me, uh, Triona Farrell, and letters VCs Joe Caramonga. The cover is by Stefano Caselli and Nolan Woodard. Variant cover by Tony Flex, uh, maybe it's Fleeks, and uh, Tim Sang. Graphic designer is Carlos Lau. I don't actually know what the graphic designer is doing. I guess he's the guy who's actually making the new logo for the, in which case, why don't you just put the logo? But maybe it's more than that. Anyhow, so um, Hawkeye can't aim. Psst, who did that? Uh, and Avengers created by Stanley and Jack Kirby. Okay, so we see that Tigra is fighting against, not really. Not really. Sorry, I'm just trying to notice what's actually happening here. There's a big mean Tigra out here, and she's very scary looking. She's gigantic, and I'd be a little bit scared too. I'd be a little scared too. But, you know, like she's not, I don't see any property damage. I don't see anybody being eaten. I don't see anybody being hacked and slashed. I just see a bunch of, you know, Avengers, and they're shooting at her, and yeah, let's see what happens, right? But what I'm not seeing is her actually hurting or damaging anybody. She winds up getting knocked out by America, uh, Miss America. She wakes up. Uh, Tiger and she's just like, oh, but all of a sudden Brodock shows up. Um, like he's been there the whole time, but I feel like he's just been watching them. I feel like he's just being astute and looking to see what this new team of West Coast Avengers can do. Now, if that is in fact the case, then he just flies up. He goes up and he has a, a conversation and, and shoes her away. So you figure he can control her if that's all that, you know, this was meant to be was a big test to see what they can do. Um, one of my, so they decide that they're going to invite him back to their pad, their, you know, so-called secret headquarters, mm -hmm, and they're going to try and observe him. Now, this brings me to probably my favorite part of this comic, uh, and by that I mean this title. So issue one and two, and probably going forward all of these issues. I love these stupid behind-the-scenes things that they're doing with the reality TV, I don't watch I don't watch TV period. I don't have any cable hooked up. I, I watch things on YouTube and a couple things on Netflix with my wife. But I'm just I'm not really interested in watching cable television, you know? But uh, a long time ago, the first season of Survivor, I watched that. I watched uh, The Apprentice, the the first I think I only watched the first two and a half seasons. I might have watched the end of the second season, but I don't, you know, I just never really got into reality TV. But I did see some of the the commercials for Big Brother, and I saw that they would do that Survivor thing where they would have people talking directly to the camera, like in an isolated room and whatnot, you know, where nobody else can hear them. So we all know what they're saying, but nobody else knows what they're saying. And as a guy from Jersey, there ain't no way in hell I'm watching freaking Jersey Shore where they've got like zero Italians on the damn show. Sorry, I'm an Italian, I'm from Jersey. That's not how Italians from Jersey are. It's not, no, uh-uh, mm-mm. So... <laughs> <laughs> my sister-in-law actually used to think that Jersey Shore was a real show. Like, these were real people, and this wasn't, like, a, a film studio or whatever. Like, that's crazy. But these these little behind-the-scenes things, they're awesome. Like, this Fuse guy. I don't know anything about this Fuse guy, but I'm really digging him just because of what's going on here. Everybody thinks that Brodock is Modoc, and maybe he is. I, I don't know. You have to ask Kelly Thompson. Um, So in here... He's just like, wait, it's this guy? This is who we're talking about? What? <laughs> so I'm really digging it. Oh, what did I just see there? What did I just see right there? Do I see a dog? <sighs> okay. Um, Miss Thompson, I know that you're not new to comics, okay? But this is just a personal thing between you and, well, not just me, but all of Comic Book University. Dude, do that. Okay, no, no, no. We can't. You, you work with this guy, okay? His name is Donnie Cates. He's known for assassinating dogs. Every time he sees a dog, he just, you know, he just, it, it happens. The guy's got a, a list of like 16 ways to kill dogs in his back pocket, even if he's wearing pants with no pockets. I, I, it's somehow, somehow, all right? So since Lucky didn't do anything in this issue, I guess that's okay. He hasn't been endeared to anybody who's only reading this comic. I didn't read the previous um, Kate Bishop comic book that was out, but 
I mean, I think that Lucky was in that book a lot, and some people were like, oh, Lucky's awesome. Okay, just hide the dog. Hide the dog. Maybe switch this out for, you know, Arrow, the super cat, okay? Because you have a dog in a comic book. At some point, you're going to hear that Donny Cates wants to do a quick little collaboration. You know, I just did one with Chip Zardosky, and it was really fun. Can I do a collab with you? And then he kills your freaking dog. And it's not your dog. It's our dog. This is a communal dog. So hide the dog. That's it. That's it. PSA aside. So I'm really digging these stupid little um, sidebars that these guys are having. We get Brodock's story, but we get this nonsense. I'm sorry. Really? Image? Brodock, who the hell do you think you're kidding? Advanced image uh, mechanics? Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. I have an idea that that's not really the way that it works. So... <laughs> I'm, I'm digging it. And and just all the stupid little commentary on here is perfect. All these stupid, every single one of these arrows is funny. You know, he doesn't wear a shirt, but if he did, this would be the moment where he tears off the shirt. Like, come on. Uh, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I'm not, uh, I'm not buying the whole Brodock thing. But you know who is buying it? Gwenpool. Gwenpool is totally buying the freaking Brodock thing. And she's all just like head over heels. Oh my God, he's got like golden rock hard abs and, and a giant sized head. And like, I wonder if the giant sized head matches the giant. <laughs> Shouldn't go there. But I'm going to tell you guys right now, uh, I've been a little bit traumatized. Um, I think most of us have. Because right over here, um, Batman's dick is actually supposed to be Nightwing, not... Batman's junk that we, we saw the bat junk. Look, I didn't mention it in that review, but dudes, come on. Stop. Look, I didn't mention it in the review because it was intentional. <laughs> it was intentional. That's the way that trauma and mental blocks work. Okay. <laughs> mm. So, uh, <laughs> in this book, Gwenpool is all sorts of digging on, um, what's his face? Uh, Brodock. And then all of a sudden, she gets into a fight with Quentin Quire. Quentin Quire's my boy. Loves me some Quentin Quire. But what happens when these two get into it with each other? Oh my god. And you're thinking to yourself, could this be more graphic? Hell yeah, Ken! Pushes her up against the wall. Everybody's like, oh my god, my eyes! Bleach my eyes! <laughs> like, what the hell's going on here? So, okay, cool. I'm down for seeing this. They, they both like the color pink, apparently. <laughs> It loves me some Quentin Choir, man, and I was never really that big of a fan of, of, um, uh, I keep on, yeah, Gwenpool, that's her name, I keep thinking Spider-Gwen, no, not Spider-Gwen, Gwenpool, totally different characters, but the thing is, I'm finding myself liking characters in this book, I don't know anything about Fuse, but I like the stupid guy, you know, um, I don't know much about America, all right, like the only book I ever, I never read the series. Uh, I've, I've said that I don't, I'm not interested in seeing the series because nobody seems to ever say anything positive about the series. So I don't want to, you know, purchase the series and, and you know, like if somebody sends me the freaking series, yeah, I'll read it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not gonna, mm, it's not gonna happen. So, uh, the only thing I know about America is what I've read in Ultimate Avengers 2, not Ultimate Avengers, The Ultimates 2. All right. Uh, so, yeah, like, and she was barely ever really in it. She showed up to punch people. And in, in a team where everybody was extremely powerful, like the weakest guy in the team was freaking Black Panther. Yeah, you know, the guy who in this series wound up turning Galactus from the Devourer to the Lifebringer. That's, yeah. So, like, nobody was weak in this story. So, you know, like, oh, here's another powerful character who can apparently teleport things. Okay, cool. So she's like the super strong Nightcrawler. I don't know anything about her. I didn't care about her. It just wasn't written for her. So I just didn't really care, you know? Here, yeah, I'm kind of liking the character. I'm kind of liking the character. And this is, of course, this has to do with the creative team. So I'm digging that about this. Something else I'm noticing is that Brodock may or may not be evil. Okay, we don't actually know yet. This could just be a case. First off, it seems to be a case of mistaken identity. We don't actually know. But what we do know is that Brodox seemed to be the coolest guy in the world. Um, certainly, obviously, testing out the, the West Coast Avengers, this new iteration. But uh, evil? I haven't seen that yet. I haven't actually seen him being evil. So when he finds out that his so-called friends have been spying on him... Yeah, he, he takes it a little bit personal. I would take that a little bit personal. You know what I'm saying? So he summons back 
giant sized tiger and he summons back a whole bunch of other people who I'm sitting here looking in the back of this book and I'm not going to show you the last page reveal. I will show you this. Oh my God. This, this dossier is awesome. Great read. Great read. But I'm seeing, uh, oh, and we can also see the uh, next issue. Yeah, there was a conversation about this, <laughs> this little gun here, giant size laser gun pointing at a table. That's not, you know, dangerous looking and ominous or, or anything to that effect. But uh, we're going to, it looks like we're going to see what happens, what, what that thing can actually do. But Tiger comes back and this, there's a silhouette of a whole bunch of other characters here. I'm really looking forward to seeing who these guys are. Like case in point, could we see the swordsman? Could we see the, um, uh, what is it? The U.S. agent? Can we see some other West Coast Avengers? Is there a giant size Moon Knight in here? Because I wouldn't complain about a giant size Moon Knight. I'm just saying. Uh, there's also some big dragon thing here. And right away, as soon as I see a giant silhouette of a dragon, I right away think that she's already agreed to a collab with uh, Donny Cates, in which case, the rest in peace, Lucky. And that's all I got. <laughs> this was a fun comic book. This was genuinely a fun comic book. Uh, I love the way the characters are written. Uh, the art is perfect for the story, everything about this comic book, I'm trying to find something wrong with it. I'll get back to you when that happens. All right, guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, class dismissed.